The idea to build a Thomas E. Lannan came from a combination of my life's experiences and the desire to bring our maritime history alive. In 1668, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts set a strip of land aside on the Essex River for anyone that wanted to build a boat. So that's where we built it. I hired Harold Burnham, a 29-year-old 11th generation Essex boat builder, to oversee the design and construction. Harold took the lines from a 1903 sword fishing schooner that Mal McLean, a local fishing captain, designed. Mal was the captain of 35 vessels in 50 years of fishing, and over 100 vessels were built from his designs. The Thomas E. Lannan represents the end of the evolution of all sail working boats in this part of the country. By 1905, diesel engines were coming in, and that meant the end of the working sailboat, until we decided that our great schooners and heritage needed to be shared with future generations. Living in Gloucester and working as a builder and construction supervisor gave me the experience to put a team of skilled tradesmen together. We worked hard and we had a lot of fun. We started cutting trees October 1, 1996 and laid the keel on December 4th of 96 and launched it June 21st, 1997. And this is how we did it. The vessel's named for my grandfather, Thomas E. Lannan. He came from the Avalon Peninsula of Newfoundland in 1901 and fished out of Gloucester until 1943. Here you go. I hope you have as much fun watching this documentary as we did building it. Well, this particular cut was probably done with kid gloves. It was one of the better cuts that I've ever seen, and there were essentially two reasons for that. The wood had such great value for this project that the trees had to come down in such a fashion that they were not damaged. The first of about 89 trees that we cut came from about a half a mile of my home in West Gloucester. This is a demonstration of continuing that uh, tradition that exists in Essex to use wood that's grown locally to use the, the sweat of, and the creativity of the people locally to build a project. The whole approach here is to build a boat uh, the way it was done more or less uh, in the 1800s. Uh, there's really only one way to do it, uh, spike up the trees. And uh, what we're doing, uh, which is a little different in this case than actual timber harvesting usually, is we're limbing, climbing the trees and limbing them when you fall these big trees, we're trying to uh, minimize the impact in this forest as far as, as, far as what's left when we, when we leave. You know, the space is the mold loft. You have to show the boat in three dimensions and you draw it in one dimension and then you draw it in the other dimension and by checking both dimensions you can see whether you've got a fair line. One of the most important aspects of the building of this boat occurs up here in this loft. We develop the uh, shape of the boat and make patterns which will determine the shape of the vessel. Each one of these lines that you see on the floor is a slice through the boat at a certain view. When you have all these lines and they're all smooth curves, you know that the outside of the boat will be a smooth curve, which is what you're aiming for. The ones that are really important are the, the, the body plan. These plans show basically the shape of the boat sliced vertically this way through the boat. And what those are used for is those are what you use to make the mold, which you take out into the yard and actually make the frames which define the shape of the boat. She's what would be classified as a Fredonia style of fishing schooner. Mel McLean defined the shape of the boat and modeled it. And I've had to modify it a good deal to get it to fit the Coast Guard regulation. Once the uh, lead and main part of the keel was set down on the cribbing, then we were able to um, put the stern uh, post up with the dead wood and the, and the um, uh, stem and uh, that was done by Christmas. 
The trustees of reservations gave us permission to cut 14 trees from Hog Island out on the Essex Marsh. So I got 36 good friends and by 2 p.m. they were all cut and skidded to the edge of the island. Cutting them is really the easy part, really, <laughs> and the most fun part. And then hauling them out was the work. One, two, three. Here we go. One, two, three. It was fun to see the trees hauled down the hills all by manpower with the, the double cant hooks and everybody on them and running down the hill, the tree chasing them right down the hill. <laughs> Captain Billy Lee from Rockport, um, the captain of the Ocean Reporter, uh, came to the edge of the island. We got about 14 trees all together. Uh, this boat is fastened with trunnels. So you've got the individual futtocks that you lay together as there's the, the layer which goes down first and then the cover goes on top of it. So it's double sawn frames, which means there's two sawn frames that are stuck together. Uh, you clamp them and then you go ahead and bore a hole and we're using tree nails, trunnels, to stick them together and they're locust pegs. And you really you sit there you use this great big old mallet to smash them in. As once we, we were actually picking the stalk, lining it out, sawing it out, planing it, and some of the frames we put together. And then we all get together, everybody else frame up, and we all get together and get together and push that frame up there so it's it's uh you get a touch of every aspect of it at least I did on this boat what I did was to mortise the cants into the into the keelson and into the forward end of the stem Lunch was a great time in the yard. We all got together and had lunch together a couple times a week sometimes. This particular day, Paul Mucci from the Coast Guard came. It was a good opportunity for him to be able to catch up with uh, what was going on and ask questions from the different workers. And we were also able to work together and kind of talk about who was ahead of schedule, who was behind schedule, and how we could keep the job flowing. Scrap wood. On the home stretch, everything is um, got to come together in the next few weeks. Um, the the rigging is almost finished. The standing rigging, the uh, masts are being um, handled by a fellow up the street. Um, the engine is all ready to go in. The stern post and rudder have been machined and. Um, Everything is about to really come together. The planking is all done, the caulking is done, the decking um, is almost done. And um, we have, at this point, we have just about two and a half weeks left uh, before we try to launch. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, the scroll work that I've done for the Lannan is based on the scroll work that was done for the uh, fishing schooner Fredonia, which was the first vessel uh, to incorporate the design features that the uh, Lannan uh, shows. And her scroll work is unusual in that it starts as a wreath around the hawse pipe and then works forward in a vine with, uh, with uh, flourishes and, uh, and floral uh, decorations. The Lannan was a good project. It was great. Uh, just the community involvement was marvelous. The people would stop by all the time. I mean, this town's being very famous for shipbuilding and just dying and disappearing. And then this being the first time in 50 years that something like this has been done again. It's, it's great. The people have been marvelous. Tom Ellis, the owner, has just been superb. Uh, it's been a really fun project. Like this, at the launching party, on this job, I'll be one of the guys that built the boat. And I get a big kick out of that. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. We bless this schooner, Thomas Lennon. May the Thomas E. Lennon, successor of 4,000 vessels, built in Essex, the dream of Tom Ellis, enjoy golden days, smooth sailing, and peaceful seas. I christened the Thomas E. We set the mast at the Beacon Marine Basin, one of the oldest working boat yards in America. Three feet. Three. Now for it, sound in a step, it's there. Yeah. We're home. We're in. We're in. This has been a, a, a wonderful project to be involved with. I've been very happy to have been assigned to it. Uh, to see a, a vessel built in a historical fashion such as this and with the materials and the workmanship that has been put into this boat. Uh, for me personally, it's been a great experience. Uh, hopefully I'll be in the area for a few more years so I can continue uh, to see how the vessel progresses in the next few years and, uh, and see how Tom's operation works out. Yeah.